So a few months ago, we started a new workshop for this channel, and it has been an utter nightmare getting permits. There is so much drama and so much back and forth with the city just to get a basic metal building put on my property. So today I'm going to walk around my property, show you what we have built so far and what we're going to build in the future and updates for other projects that we've worked on in the past. So we're just going to run around my house and I'm going to show you what I've been working on. So this is going to be workshop number two. We've already poured the slab we're just waiting on the permits we also have all of the material to build it we ordered everything but we're just waiting on the city right now but it's about the same size as the other workshop it's also going to be just a metal building it's not going to be insulated with an attic and all of that other stuff and then over here we have a temporary array connected to the ep cube system this is 10 400 watt panels in series so 4,000 watts and this is powering my home right now through the EP cube. Now, previously we were using the array on top of this trailer with the EP cube system, but it's too small. It's only 800 watts. So I took a bunch of solar panels I have laying around in my backyard. I threw them on the ground and boom, we have a 4,000 watt array and it doesn't require permits at all. And technically it's legal. There's not a single law that I see this breaking. It's just some panels thrown on the ground. There's nothing bad about that, right? And it produces a lot of power and you can easily expand your system. If you have a lot of room and you have concrete or dirt, you just throw some panels on the ground. But a ballast mount would be better. So we're gonna be reviewing those very soon. And once the workshop is here, we're gonna rip these out and build some ballast mounts on the other side of the property. So that'll be super fun. But for now, we're just waiting. We'll have a metal building here and it's gonna be massive. Also, the golf carts are doing really well and I wanna show you all the updates on those. So a few months ago, we built out this golf cart with lithium iron phosphate batteries and it has officially become the trash cart because I don't like it that much. The throttle, the brake, the handling, it just isn't that much fun, but it does work for its purpose. So filling this thing up with trash and then loading up my cargo van and then taking all of that stuff to the landfill is fantastic, but it's not very enjoyable. It's not a fun golf cart in my opinion. Now something about this golf cart makes it fun. The throttle and the brake, the handling, it's lifted. There's something that's so enjoyable about riding this around the neighborhood. I pull kids on bikes and scooters. I loaded this up with all of my siblings. Um, whenever friends come to visit, we always drive this around the neighborhood. It's a lot of fun. And we've been running the Roy Pal battery in it for, I what, a couple years now? And we haven't had a single issue just turns on and off. Look how dirty it is. Even the solar charge controller, like everything in here is just filled with dirt because we take it off road. And all the businesses that I talk to that install these haven't had a single one go bad. This is like the best battery for golf carts and probably the most popular because every shop I went to is selling these. And I also installed the braking resistor as well, which helps. And in my opinion, it looks cool. It's just a relaxing experience. Maybe I'm getting older, but just kicking back on my little golf cart here and going through the neighborhood is just so much fun and it's cheap it was like two thousand dollars we just had to swap out the battery that's it now on this side of the house we have a lot of heat pumps because last year we did some instructional videos showing you how to evacuate the line set and how to release the refrigerant and how to do it legally i really wanted to start testing these and see if there was a major difference i realized that unlike solar products these actually work they work really well. Even if they leak and you have to refill it, they just keep on working without any issue. So it's quite boring compared to the solar products that break all the time. So I don't even know what to cover with these. It's just so easy and they just work. Now for my two buildings, the workshop has two heat pumps with a total capacity of 48,000 BTU. And then we have two heat pumps going to this building and then another two on the other side. And then we have the traditional air conditioners down there. And those we actually installed soft starts. And these were very easy to install. It's very confusing at first when you read the instructions and you don't have an air conditioner in front of you but I promise you it's very simple and I'll probably do a tutorial even though there's lots of tutorials I bet I could make it easier to follow before I installed it it took 100 amps to start up the compressor in this condenser unit okay that is a massive amount of current especially for an off-grid solar power system so if you're trying to run your entire house off of an off-grid inverter and the one limiting factor is the air conditioner 
you should consider a saw starter. The biggest downside though is the price. This thing cost almost 400 freaking dollars and I still don't understand why. I mean, I understand that they have proprietary software and they have this four stage ramp up process, this huge capacitor, but that's a lot of money for what's inside of this box. But it enables you to run your whole system off grid a lot easier. So instead of spending another $5,000 for a second Solark, for example, you could just throw this on your wall and be done. So for some of you, this will actually save you a lot of money. Now this is not solar related, but I think you guys should study what's in your water and consider a whole home filtration system because what's in our water today is messing with people's hormones and with their brains. If you read about what happens when you ingest lots of heavy metals, atrazine, glyphosate, um, there's also antibiotics in the water and there's also birth control. So your testosterone, your estrogen, and all of your other hormones are going out of whack because of what's in the water. And it's not just the water that you drink, it's the water that you shower in, it's the water that you cook with, it's the water that you feed your plants and then you eat the food. So you need to filter your water. All of our aquifers, our waterways are filled with junk and it's messing with people's brains. You'll notice a lot of people have some problems nowadays, but I'll let you guys draw your own conclusions. I just want you to get a little curious and maybe read about it sometime, okay? Just, just take a look at what's out there. Also, you'll notice my clothing has changed. This is wool and this is cotton. I do not wear polyester anymore. I don't want my hormones to change and I don't wanna become mentally ill like a lot of people around me. And I think that's what's causing it. And there's actual evidence of this. Nothing I'm saying I'm making up or hippy dippy, whatever. Um, everything that I'm talking about with the water in your clothing actually makes a profound found difference that you can measure over time. So yeah, just look into it. And hopefully this makes you guys a little curious. I just want you to look around, do a couple Google searches, find some actual evidence-based literature and look around and you'll be surprised at what you find, I think. Now the workshop looks absolutely horrendous because I thought the new workshop was gonna be built very quickly. So I started piling stuff up and I was like, oh, we're just gonna empty this out into the new workshop. But uh, you know, months and months go by and we're going back and forth with the city. So this is where we're at. I really need to clean it. But the 18K has been running every single day and it works flawlessly. It actually works so well that it's been boring. Um, I really don't know what else to test or what else to do. Um, it works every single day. I control it from my phone all the time. If I need more power, I'll pull from the grid and charge this thing up and then I'll dump it into one of the electric cars. Um, this also runs my 6000 XP system, which I'll show you in a second. But yeah, not a single issue. And there are issues on the forum that people have run into. But man, for me, this thing has been perfect. Not a single hiccup at all. And the rest of the shop is equally as messy. So yeah, I did organize all this a few months ago and it looked good, but yeah, because we have the new workshop coming, I thought, hey, I'll just pile this stuff in here and that was a mistake. Now, please excuse the mess this whole workshop is filled to the rim. There's actually some spots that I don't wanna show on video because it's really bad. It's like just piles and piles of wire. But for the 6000 XP, it has been running all day, every day, since I built the system. And I haven't changed any of the settings. I haven't touched anything at all. Um, this is from the output of the 18K. And again, very boring. I plug my car in, it charges it. Once it runs out, it charges from the grid. That's it, super simple. But soon we're gonna connect a large array to this and that will be super fun. Um, I'm also gonna connect more heat pumps to it because right now most of the heat pumps are connected to the 18K. But I could easily power all of the heat pumps off of this system. I don't even need the 18K to run those anymore. And this has become the most popular inverter. So we need to make more videos about it and maybe expand the system size. And more batteries. We should add maybe another server rack of batteries to this thing. That would be awesome. Actually, we could connect all these batteries to this, like with a couple cables. That'd be super easy. What I really want is some more Power Pro batteries because if we could throw two of those under here and lift these up a bit, we would have the coolest looking system and for the lowest price. Um, those batteries cost pretty much the same as a server rack battery. And these cost a lot less than the 18K because they're not hybrids and you can run a whole house off of them. 
um, that would be really cool. And above you is a Tesla, because in recent times, I think I should drive my Model X because if I was in an accident, I don't want to die. And this Model 3, even though it has a high safety rating, it's still a small car. So I have vouched for driving my SUV more instead because I don't want to die. Also, we have like seven or eight of these EcoFlow Delta Pros, which I'm not sure what to do with them anymore. They have the new Delta Pro Ultra, so we need to cover that once the software is, you know, working perfectly and they want to send one out. But these are good too, so I might have to give these to some forum members. I've given away so many batteries to forum members, it's absolutely bonkers. So it's, it's fantastic that we have that as a resource. If you want to get free stuff from me and you live close by, post on the forum and help other people out and then send me a message and say, hey, look how many messages I have, look how I've helped the community and I'll give you a battery. So yeah, let me know. Also check out these batteries. <laughs> it started raining, which it doesn't really do in Vegas and it just corroded and rusted them out. Also, we have some Nissan Leaf cells and I need to find a safe way to dispose of these. I do not like this chemistry. This is not lithium iron phosphate and it's dangerous. Also with my cats, I didn't like the smell of the litter box. So I made an outdoor enclosure and it's called a catio. You can buy these online and then you just add a little door that goes from the inside to the outside and then you put all the cat litter out here and then I don't have to smell anything. And then the cats can come out here and look at all the birds and they go out absolutely nuts for them. Every like 20 minutes, they're out here perched up over here or they're sunbathing and they absolutely love it. And we've got a hummingbird feeder right next to the enclosure. So it's hilarious watching the cats freak out. And then the hummingbirds are pretty brave now. They just sit here and look at the cats. It's super funny. Also recently, I found a tarantula. I found a praying mantis. I've rescued two birds in the last couple of months. There's been, just been tons of animals in my backyard lately, but I did not pick up the tarantula, but I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I'm gonna go out to the desert again and try to find one. I'm gonna try to scoop it up and they, they seem pretty nice. The fangs can hurt, but usually they won't bite you. So I can't wait to try that out. Also, we have lots of solar panels and we're gonna make a new array with ballast mounts after we build the workshop. But yeah, they're just sitting here, just collecting dust because we can't get the permit for the freaking building. So once that's done, we're gonna build a really cool ballast mount ground array. Also for my bedroom, I installed a heat pump and it's been running 24 seven ever since I installed it. So yeah, that thing's been fantastic. Also, this is February in Las Vegas and we have plenty of sunshine. I don't know how people live in other places, but I love Las Vegas the most. Now this building is permitted and we're probably gonna enclose it after we get the permit for that because we'll have a bunch of materials and we're gonna order a bunch of stuff. But we're gonna have two big buildings that we can test with. And then on the other side of this wall, we're gonna put the ground mount array and we're gonna clear all this stuff out. So it's a work in progress, but it's, it's happening. Also, I bought a Z06 and some other fancy cars in their garbage, okay? They have broken so many times. I've gone through tr two transmissions and one engine and lots of other problems with these supercars, right? They are, it's a part-time job. I wish I never got any of them, except for these two. These are the best supercars I've ever owned. It's an NSX and a GT4 Porsche. Absolutely zero issues with either one. I'm never gonna buy anything else again. It was my dream to get these nice cars. It is an awful dream, okay? I was wrong. But these are super fun. You can drive these out to the desert. They handle so well. I wanna make a car channel, but there's tons of car channels and no one cares. So, and most people can't afford these. I'd much rather um, review EVs, but people get mad about that because they get political or whatever. I don't care, I like the engineering. I wanna just talk about what they, how they work, but yeah, everything's political nowadays, so oh well. But these ones are fantastic. I love these with all my heart. I'm never gonna sell these. These are perfect. Next update, I can't show you, but the front of my house, I ripped up all the dirt, all the plants, all the rocks, all the decorative stuff, right? And I filled it in with concrete, and it's like the best decision ever. It looks a little goofy, okay? Some people have mentioned that it doesn't look as nice now, 
but it's more utilitarian. I can bring, you know, big trucks up. I can bring trailers up. I don't have to worry about hitting any stupid decorative plant or whatever. Also, I've had two major leaks with my landscape lines in the last 12 months. So now I don't have to worry about that anymore. It's less maintenance, less water. I just, can't, I have more room to work and to build. Also, my wardrobe has changed. So I said I'm wearing wool and I highly suggest you guys try this out. It's very good for temperature regulation and I don't smell as bad. If you're working all day in polyester, it just makes you smell awful. The bacteria just fester in that. Or even if I'm sitting in a long drive in a car, I don't smell bad when you wear wool. And there's good wool products like this. This is called Smart Wool. So yeah, look into it. Natural fibers are the way to go, especially if you work very hard. And that's pretty much all I have to share today. Um, just a bunch of random updates. Once we get the new workshop it's gonna be amazing also the forum is on a new server and it's lightning fast and we can have upwards of 10,000 user connections at a time and that has been a nightmare that's one of the reasons I haven't been making videos is because of that stupid server we were on a bad server and it had a million issues I could talk about for the next 30 minutes of all the little tiny things that we had go wrong but now everything is super solid for decades to come so I'm super Super excited about that. So check out the forum and I'll have more videos this year and we'll have a new workshop. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.